In this video, I will finish section one six on other types of equations and applications. Uh, last time, we, uh, in the first part of the video, I did rational equations. We're going to do next equations with radicals. Okay, so in order to solve equations with radicals, we need to use the following property. Okay, so this is on page 140. I'm copying this. If P and Q are algebraic expressions, then every solution of the equation P equals Q is also a solution of the equation P to the N equals Q to the N for any positive integer N. And again, like it, like uh, with rational equations, we need to check solutions. We're going to start by solving, or let me read the guidelines. Okay, so the, the the procedure for solving an equation involving radicals is to first isolate the radical on one side of the equation. Once you do that, raise, raise each side of the equation to a power that is the same as the index of the radical so that the radical is eliminated. So if the equation still contains a radical, repeat steps one and two. Number three, solve the resulting equation, which is going to be most likely a, a quadratic equation. And step four, check each proposed solution in the original equation. So we always need to check. Because the solu a solution of the resulting quadratic equation may not be a solution of the radical equation. So always check. And the problem here is that, um, that the square root of a negative number is not a real number. So we are going to solve uh, the equation minus the square root of 40 minus 9x plus 2 equals x. So step number one, we need to isolate the radical on one side, on one, on one side of the equation. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to bring the two to the other side, to the, to the right side. So the opposite of 40 minus 9x equals x minus 2. Once we isolate the radical, we're going to uh, raise to a power of the same index as the radical. In this case, we have a square root. So we're going to raise to the second power. We're going to raise both sides to the second power so we can eliminate this radical. You know, minus minus is plus. And the second power and the radical cancel out. And 40 minus 9x equals x squared minus 2 squared. That's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. So now we have a quadratic equation that we can solve by factoring. Uh, we first need to write the quadratic equation in standard form. Uh, we can add 9x to both sides and subtract 40 from both sides. So we can solve this by factoring as x plus 9 and x minus 4. 
So the possible solutions are negative nine and four. These are only possible solutions. We still need to check because when we plug them back in, we may have some complex numbers. So we need to check. So let's check negative nine. Okay, we're going to plug them into the original equation. This is the opposite of 40 minus nine times negative nine plus two equals negative nine. But negative nine times negative nine is 81. It's positive 81, so that's the square root of 40 plus 81. Plus two equals nine. 40 plus 81 is 121. So minus 11 plus 9. Um, okay, I'm using a minus. Yeah, that, that there was a minus 9. So at the end, we have that minus 11 plus 2 equals minus 9. This is true. So negative nine is a solution. And we're going to check four. Okay, we're going to plug in four into the original equation. And verify that both sides are equal. So negative, so this is minus 40 minus 36 plus two equals four. But 40 plus 40 minus 36 is four. So this is minus square root of four plus two equals four. And minus 2 plus 2 equals 4. But 0 equals 4. You know that this is false. And the only solution is negative 9. So that is going to be the solution set. OK, the solution set is just negative 9. Okay, so we start, so we obtain a quadratic equation from the equation with radicals. But when we check the solutions, we found that only one of the solutions of the quadratic equation is a solution of the equation with radicals. Okay, when we saw the guidelines, we saw that if we still have a radical, we're going to repeat the process. The next example is an equation with two radicals. So we are going to solve a square root of x. Plus square root of x minus 20 equals 10. Now we have two radicals. What we're going to do is isolate the more complicated radical on each side. So we're going to uh, we're going to write a radical on each side. Isolating the more complicated one, isolating the more complicated on one side.
So we're going to isolate the square root of x minus 20 and move the square root of x to the other side. Next step, we're going to square both sides. to eliminate the first square root. So the square root of x minus 20 squared is x minus 20. And uh, 10 minus square root of x squared is going to be 100 minus 2 times 10 times square root of x. So that's minus 20 square root of x. And square root of x squared is going to be x. So you know that square root of x squared is x, so that's going to be plus x. OK, so again, we're going to isolate the radical on one side. So isolate the radical on one side. We're going, we're going to repeat the process. Okay, when we do that, if we subtract x on any of the sides, we have what? We have that uh, the x's cancel out. So I'm going to indicate this with red. These are the x, so they cancel out. And then subtract 100, subtract 100 from both sides. So the opposite of one or my negative 120 is the opposite of negative 20 square root of x divide both sides by 20 uh, negative 120 divided by negative 20 is going to be 6 and x is going to be 36 but we're not done yet we need to talk OK, so let's check into the original equation. So we expect, let's see, the square root of 36 plus square root of 36 minus uh, 20 equals 10. If we get that uh, both sides are equal, then the equation, then the statement is true and it's going to be a solution. Otherwise, it's not going to be a solution. If I get something like 8 equals 10 or something different than 10 on the left side, that cannot be a solution. Square root of 36 is 6. 36 minus 20 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So 10 equals 10. And the solution set is 36. So the two examples we did involve square roots. The previous two examples involved square roots, other rules, but the same rule or the same procedure applies to other radical and rational exponents. So I'm copying this from uh, page 142. One example involving a cube root.
That's page 142. We're going to solve the cube root of 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus the, square, minus the cube root of x equals 0. So the first step is to write a radical on each side. And uh, the cube root of 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals the cube root of x. So we wrote a radical on each side. Next step is to uh, raise both sides by the third power. OK, so 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals x. That's a quadratic equation that we're going to write in standard form. Subtract x or, or subtract x from both sides. And that is something we can do by we can do by factoring. That will factor as 4x plus 1 and x plus 1. So the so, so this is minus, this is minus. And the solutions of the quadratic equation are going to be 1 over 4 and 1. And uh, x equals 1. OK, these are only possible solutions. We're not done yet. We need to check. We still need to check them. OK, so we're going to check 1 over 4. So we started with the cube root of 4 times 1 over 4 squared minus 4 times 1 over 4 plus 1 minus the cube root of 1 fourth equals 0. Now the cube root of one fourth is not uh, is not an exact number, so let's see what let's see if we can simplify the first radical. Okay, so one fourth squared is one over sixteen. This is four times one over sixteen minus one plus one minus the cube root of one over four equals zero. So this to cancel out. And then 4 over 16 is 1 over 4. So all this simplifies as the cube root of 1 over 4 minus the cube root of 1 over 4. We're subtracting the same thing, so this to cancel out also. And 0 equals 0. So 1 fourth is a solution. And we're going to check 1. Well, 1 is easier to check. So that's the cube root of 4 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 1 minus the cube root of 1 equals 0. We're going to verify that both sides are equal. Once, uh, 1 squared is 1. OK, so that's 4 minus 4 plus 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. This to cancel out. So we have the cube root of 1, which is 1. So at the end, we have 1 minus 1 equals 0, which is also true. So the solution set is 1, 4, 1. Both ended up being solutions.
Okay, so whenever you have rational exponents, um, in general, for any rational exponents, or for equations, with any rational exponents, Um, the nth root of x to the m is either the n root of x raised to the n power or x to the m over n. For example, The cube root of seven squared, it's uh, seven to the two thirds. Or the q or or the same as the cube root of seven, the, the cube root of seven raised to the second power. If you want to solve Uh, x to the three halves equals eight. You can uh, raise both sides by a reciprocal exponent. So x to the three halves, you can raise this to the two thirds. So the exponents cancel out and we have that x is the same as the q root of 8 squared. The q root of 8 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. So a quick check shows that this is indeed a solution. What is that? This is four to the three halves. But four to the three halves is the, squ is the square root of four raised to the third power. So that's two cubed and that is eight. So yes, it is a solution. So I'm going to do an example that is slightly different. Uh, we're going to solve. That's a different example. Um, X plus two to the two thirds equals nine. We can rewrite this as the cube root of X plus two squared. Okay, so you need to be careful with this one because when you take square root of both sides, you know from the square root property, you know that the cube root of x plus two, so this is an even root, equals plus minus three. And we can do the rest. We can raise both sides by the third power. And uh, x plus 2 equals uh, 3 cubed. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is, is negative 27. So we have two possible solutions. We have that either x plus 2 equals negative 27, or x plus 2 equals 27. So x is either negative 25 or 29. OK.
Okay, we are going to check the solutions. Uh, we're not done yet. We don't know whether there are solutions to the radical equation, so we're going to check them. So let's check. Negative 25. check negative 25, we have that. Um, let me just make it, okay, I see what I did wrong. This is, uh, so this is negative 29 and this is 25. Yeah, I, I had to subtract uh, two from both sides. So we're going to check first, negative 29. Okay, so I'm going to close the board for a moment because this is stuck, this froze. So let me close it and open it again. Okay, so let's try again. Okay, so we're going to check negative 29. So when we check negative 29 plus 2 to the 2 thirds, we want this to be equal to 9. Negative 27 uh, plus 2 is uh, negative 29 plus 2 is negative 27. And then that's the cube root of that raised to the second power. But the Q root of negative 27 is negative 3. And negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So that is a solution. And we're going to check 25. So that's 25 plus 7 to the 2 thirds. Or 25 uh, plus 2 to the 2 thirds. We want this to be equal to 9. Uh, 25 plus 2 is 27. But the Q root of 27 is 3. And 3 squared is 9. So they both ended, uh, ended up being solutions. And the solution set is negative 29, 25. Okay, so that's about, ra uh, about radical equations. And the last type of equation is uh, our equations in quadratic form. So this is on page 143 in the book. Uh, 
an equation in simple quadratic form if it can be written as a u squared plus b u plus c equals zero, where a does not equal zero and u is some algebraic expression. Okay, so I will do a few examples. I'm, I'm going to do three examples of this type of equations. So these are at the end of the book. We're going to solve each equation. Uh, this on page 148, number 88. Let's copy that. Okay, so this on page 148. So 4x, 4x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 3. Uh, work equals 0, so we're going to let u be x squared. And that way we have a quadratic equation. We know that uh, x squared squared is x to the fourth. So that's 4u squared minus u plus three equals zero. That's an equation that we can solve by factoring. These factors are two u minus one and two u minus three. So possible solutions, we have that two u equals one or u equals one half. And I mean, or uh, u equals two thirds or three halves, three halves. But now u is x squared. So really what we have is x squared equals one half And x squared equals three halves. That means we have four possible solutions. Those are plus minus square root of one half and plus minus square root of three halves. So we found the solutions of the quadratic equation, but we need to check them into, into the original equation. So we're going to start by checking the square root of one half. Okay, so I'm sure I was sharing the screen, but this is what I have done so far. Okay, so let's check the square root of one half. So let's plug this into the original equation. This is four times square root of one half to the fourth power minus eight times square root of one half squared plus three. So square root of one fourth to the fourth power, that's, uh, so this one, this one half, this one half. So square root of one half square is one half, and one half square is one fourth. Square root of one half squared is one half. So this is one minus four plus three equals zero, which is indeed zero. So that is the solution, and by the exact same argument, the square root of negative one half, I mean, the uh, negative square root of one half is also a solution. So I'm not going to repeat the process. Just similarly, the opposite of that is a solution.
And let's check square root of three halves. Okay, we plug it into the original equation. This is four times square root of three halves squared minus uh, to, sorry, to the fourth minus eight times square root of three halves squared plus three equals zero. So square root of three halves squared is three halves and three halves squared is going to be nine fourths. Okay, so let's check that this equal to zero. This is nine minus uh, eight over two is four. So that's four times three is 12 plus three. But four minus 12 plus three is zero. And similarly, the opposite of that is a solution. OK, the solution set will consist of all four solutions of that quadratic equation or that equation in quadratic form. Let's write this down. The solution set is going to be negative square root of three halves, negative square root of one half. A square root of one half. A square root of three halves. So another equation in quadratic form is the following. That's on the same page, uh, 148, we're going to solve this equation by letting you. So we have 2x minus 1 to the two thirds plus 2 times 2x minus 1 to the 1 third minus 3. So by letting you be 2x minus 1 to the 1 third, we can write this as a quadratic equation. This is u squared plus two times u minus three equals zero. So we can factor okay so u is negative one or u equals three. So u is uh two x minus one to the one third. Uh, so two x minus one to the one third is either negative one or two x minus one to the one third is positive three. So if we raise both to the third power, two uh, x minus one is negative one. So two, so let's see, so 2x, um, okay, just checking that everything is correct. So 2x minus one. Uh, okay, I see what I see what I'm missing. So this was uh, negative three and one. So this is negative three and one. So one. 
Okay, so negative three cubed is negative 27 or two uh, X minus one. So raised to the third power. That is equal to one. Okay, so we're going to do this. So let's solve for x. Add one to both sides, that's negative 26. Divide by two, that's negative 13. And add one to both sides, two x equals two, or x equals one. Okay, so we're going to check. We're going to check negative 13. So that is uh, two times negative 13 minus one to the two thirds. And then plus two times, uh, two times negative 13 minus one to the one third. minus three equals <clears throat> zero. So two times negative 13 is uh, negative 26. Negative 26 minus one is negative 27. Plus two times negative 26 minus one to the one third. We're going to check that this is true. Uh, what do we have next? So that's negative 27 to the one third. So that's uh, the cube root. Of negative 27 raised to the second power plus two times the cube root of negative 27 or negative 27. Minus three equals zero. Uh, so that's uh, negative three squared. Plus two times negative three, minus three. And this is nine minus six minus three equals zero. So zero equals zero, that is true. So negative 13 is a solution. And um, I'm just going to skip the check for number one. So I'm going to skip the check for number one, but also negative one is a solution. So we skip the check. And the solution set is so that's positive. The solution set is 113. Or negative 13, one, if you write this in order. Okay, now I will do one more example. With this, I finish the section. That's number 99. Now the exponents are negative. Okay, on number 99, we're going to let u be x to the negative one. We can write this equation in quadratic form. So x or 10 times uh, u squared, you know, x to the negative one squared is x to the negative two plus 33u minus seven is zero.
Okay, that's an equation that we can factor. This factors as 5u minus 1 and uh, 2u plus 7. Okay, so 5u minus 1 equals 0. Or uh, 5u equals 1 or u equals 1 fifth. But if u is x minus 1, or x to the negative 1, or the reciprocal of x, x is 5. And then 2u plus 7 equals 0. So 2u is negative 7. Uh, u is negative 7 over 2. And x is negative 2 over 7. OK, we're finally going to check. Let's check. Negative 2 over 7. So uh, 10 times negative 7 over 2 uh, raised to the second power plus 33 times negative 7 over 2. minus 7 equals 0. We're going to check that this is equal to 0. So negative 7 over 2 squared is going to be uh, 49 over 4. So that's 10 times 49 over 4. And then minus 33 times 7 is 231 over 2. Minus 7 equals 0. So that one is plus. So 49 or 10 over uh, 10 over 4 is 5 halves. So at the end, it simplifies as 245 over 2 plus 231 over 2 minus 7 equals 0. That's 486. Let's see, so this is, um, so, so that's, yeah, that's a minus, I'm missing a minus. And 14 over two minus seven equals zero, so that is true. So at the end we have zero over zero. So that is true, and we're finally going to check five. So 10 times 1 fifth squared plus 33 times 1 fifth minus 7 equals 0. Let's verify that this is true. 1 over 5 squared is 1 over 25 plus 33 over 5 minus 7 equals 0. But 10 over 25 simplifies um, so that simplifies as 2 over 5 so 2 over 5 plus 33 over 5 is 35 over 5 where 35 over 5 is 7 so at the end 0 equals 0 and we're done. Okay, so finally the solution set is negative two over seven comma five. Thank you for listening.